Welcome to Ask the Experts. Jack and I have hijacked the computer, so the goofy intro has been, I don't know, erased. Don't know where it went, Jack. Yeah, something happened to his knees. They got knocked yeah, right out. Yeah, got one of my people. <laughs> hey, this is the Dream Team back in action. I'm Jill Schlesinger. I'm Jack Otter. I'm Eric Schoenberg. Thank God my men are here. I have been suffering so without both of you in the same uh, room. We missed you too, Jack. It's terrible. Eric, been traveling, doing all sorts of things behind our back. Mm. I've mm. been loyal. You have been. Yeah. This week, <laughs> last week. Uh, okay, so a lot to go through here. Um, first, let me talk. We were just talking about this off the air, so we might as well talk about it on the air, which is we are getting such amazing response to our story about the four things to buy at Target. And it seems like you put Target out there and people go bananas. So, my favorite exciting thing to find out that they sell at Target that's great to buy is cosmetics. Not as good for you guys. So what's the thing that you were psyched about that you should buy at Target? What do you think? Well, we discovered Target thanks to diapers, which we're now just about to get out of. Yes. Um, but there were good prices there. I think We being Jack's family. Yes. Yeah. Right, not, not, not Jack not himself. Not money watch Or not, not Jack himself. <laughs> yeah, sorry, not Jack himself. <laughs> I'm, I'm good for now. Um, food, fresh food. How about that? Fresh food. Wow, wow. who knew? Yeah. Who knew? What do you what do you like, Eric? What what were the the what did you like in terms of the things that you could oh, buy? I'm still waiting to hear the fourth thing for Jack. Uh, well, food was my ex- ex- excitement because uh. the place where we shop for my children didn't actually have fresh food, so I was interested to learn that the Target is a good place to buy food. Uh, okay, but what was the other thing? There were four things: food, uh, cosmetics, food. Diapers? Two, two, diapers one of them? Uh, no, that was one. That's a, uh, okay. an otter the, family. So this is yes. the other one. G- green cleaning products. That's right, okay. which we've also purchased at Target. Uh-huh. And uh-huh. get this, Eric, the Kindle. Oh, the Kindle. The ki- is, are you tempted to buy? Or are you? do you I'm have an, one? I'm an iPad man myself. I hmm. just, yeah. All right. I, but I do love reading those e-books. Yeah? I tell you, yeah. It's just a great... Books on planes, books on trains. Yeah, they're only the only way what a what a tablet weighs. That's a great invention. Anyway, great leap forward. Check out this article. I think it's great. And of course, we have the four things not to buy at Target as well. But in case Target's listening and watching, we love you. We certainly would take your advertising dollars. But you know, we got to have it both ways. You got to do but what to buy and what not to buy. Please gotta... ask me. Cover your ears when Jill says that. <laughs> I'm not a. I'm not like that. I want them to know that we love them, but we can sort of say good things and bad things. You know, we're. I don't know. And we oh. got a nice endorsement in the comments. The, the three thousand five hundred comments, but the one one that I saw at the top there was somebody in the returns department saying, "Sure enough, the furniture is getting returned all the time ah. because of its lousy quality." You guys were right in saying furniture is not the thing to buy at Target. It's so don't buy furniture, uh, movies and music. And here's one that is not shocking to me, exercise equipment. <laughs> I think exercise equipment in any big box store sort of suspect, right? Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. And we know they become coat hangers anyway That's and dust collectors. Oh, yes, right. So, All right. Well, yes. um, you should never buy it except used. <laughs> exactly. Uh, okay, guys. So you're, we're back in session here. Ask yeah. the experts. Back to school so let me just start with um, Eric. How are you doing after dropping your daughter off at college? Yeah, an empty nester now. I'm doing okay. I'm yeah. doing okay. She sounds happy, and that's the key thing. Yeah. Well, you know, while you were away, I interviewed uh, Zach Bissonette, and again, another person to, you know, throw cold water in my face about the Ivy League. So you were not here to defend us, and I, you would be proud of me that I didn't even get defensive. I just said, okay, it's not worth it. Although... Someone pointed out to me something recently that who said, uh, you know what? I've never heard anyone say, gosh, I wish I didn't go to that Ivy League school that I went to. I have not actually heard that. I've heard uh, people say, I wish I hadn't gone to private school of a certain level, and then maybe I should have gone to a public school, but I haven't really heard that yet. Bill yeah. Gates? He's happy he didn't go anywhere. <laughs> 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 but I, I don't know. I just thought it was interesting. So you can check that out and get more depressed if you yes. want. Yes. Well, Zach goes to uh, University of Massachusetts. ZooMass. ZooMass. ZooMass Amherst. Well, so yeah, there he has is. something to prove. I guess so. Oh, <laughs> God. you! I love that snarkiness there. Um, okay, guys. What do we think? Uh, economy. Back to school for the economy. We've got some new potential stimulus. Shh. Don't say that word. Oh, yeah. Shh, don't say stimulus, but just some new plans to help the economy move forward. What, are these going to work or not, Jack? 
Oh, I wish they would, but I, I don't think so. I think, to me, the government can come in and save us from spiraling into a black hole of awful depression, which the government did, yes. and I'm glad the government did that. But at this point, uh, I just don't think uh, either, frankly, marginal, which is what Obama wants, or massive, which, say, the Tea Party or the Republicans want. I just I think at this point they're just not going to do that much. We had 20 years of, I sound like a broken record, but 20 years of spending more than we made. Mm-hmm. And now we're paying for that. And Mm -hmm. it's going to take a while for the people to repair their balance sheets, for the financial institutions to repair their balance sheets. I mentioned this to Eric. I was having a Mount Gay and Tonic with a guy from Deutsche Bank who (laughs) went down with the ship at Lehman. Um, Ask me. I want you to know that those are not product placements. (laughs) No, no. Certainly. And and, And, and I think that obviously Jack doesn't have any ego because he said Mount Gay. And after um, (laughs) taking a sip, he told me that every one of the banks would be insolvent if they had to mark to market today. Wow. And I said, still? He said, absolutely. Huh. Um, Yeah. So it's it's bad out there, but it's 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 it, we're at the point where it's just going to take time and careful budgeting uh, to to work our way out. Eric, do you think any of the any of these measures, small business uh, depreciation? I think the best thing was the accelerated depreciation. Yeah. So it, anything that encourages businesses to spend on investment, money that they should be spending anyway in mm-hmm. a growing economy, that will do their business good and make it more productive. That's a good thing. I'm less enthusiastic about infrastructure, although I think it's good to repair the roads and make the infrastructure better I, as far as it's creating a whole lot of jobs yes yeah, six and years it doesn't kick in until 2011 even get started it, that's not going to help us but so i don't know i'm not sure that any of these measures i i think i get the payroll tax holiday where uh, i guess that's off the table now but i understand that that the way it would work is that if the employer right uh didn't pay that payroll tax and use that money to hire people. There's an incentive there. But most of these other plans don't really seem like they're job creators. Mm. And and that's what's hard to wrap your head around, isn't it? Right. Yeah. Right. I mean, the biggest job creator of all will be the return of confidence. Yeah. yeah. And people feeling like it's safe to hire again. I was encouraged today to see that layoffs have pretty much stopped. So they've returned to pre-recession levels. I, th- I think that I think it's demand. I mean, I, you hear a lot about the confidence and then that tr- people try to turn that into a political thing where they say, mm-hmm. well, if it wasn't for all this uh, uncertainty caused by the administration, then people, I think businesses aren't hiring because they don't know that the demand will be there. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I spoke to a CEO of a small company recently who had three openings and he said, and we need these people. He said, the demand, the work is pouring in, but he just said, I, I don't know if the demand is going to be there six months from now. Right. He doesn't want right. to hire them and then have to let them go. Right, yeah. I mean confidence in that sense. Yeah. This is confidence that if you take a risk, it'll pay off. Yeah. Right. And I just don't think people feel that way. Now. Right. Time and patience, huh? Those are not very American qualities that we <laughs> uh. cling to, but maybe that's where we have to go. So, all right, let's shift gears. Let's go to some questions. If you've got a question, shoot us an email, ask the experts at moneywatch.com. And here's a nice softball, because I always like to start with an easy one. Nice email from Yogi. Hi, I recently came across your website. It's a very, very nice website. Did you get those two varies? Very, very. I'm a new learner in terms of savings and investing. My question is, I'm trying to understand strategies to save more and pay less taxes. Can you please point me, I'm going to add a word in, which I think in a direction, so that I can increase my savings. Jack, how do you want to increase savings and save on taxes? So I'm not sure if this person just needs the vehicle or do we actually need to find some ways to, to trim the expenses I want you to go bit. whichever way you want to go. Okay. Well, we're going to start with trimming. My favorite, my favorite method for saving money is to actually save the money that you save. And by that, I mean, I think we all say, oh, I bought this thing on sale or I made my lunch today so I don't have to go to the deli and pay $8 for a sandwich. I saved money. But then we don't actually save it. So what if you mark down in a notebook or you just take the money out of your wallet and put it somewhere, you find them, whatever method works for you, and then you literally put that into a savings account at the end of the week or the month. Then you actually save the money that you save and keep that discipline because otherwise I think, you know, you buy something on sale and then you spend that 20% that you saved, you spend it on something else. Right. So that's how you save the money. Then where to put it and save on taxes, uh, I guess... Probably they mean they want to save on taxes today and not 20 years from now. So an IRA, traditional IRA, is probably a good way to go. Although, depending on this person's age and financial situation, I'd say put it in a Roth, pay the taxes now, and save later. 
Eric, you have some saving, investing, tax tips? Well, it sounds like Yogi's young, so he's probably working, and so a 401k is available to him, and he may even have a Roth 401k. And that is obviously the way to accomplish both goals at the same time. That's what I was thinking. And as far as savings goes, I find it a lot easier to just put the money away, to save it before you have a temptation to right. spend it. Um, I'll never be as organized as Jack and, and <laughs> put a dollar be? I save into be, my for wallet. God's sakes. But if you take it out of my hands and out of temptation's way, it just, it'll be there yeah. in 20 years. And you know what? A lot of big mutual fund companies and brokerage houses and banks, they make it easy to do. You can pick some, mo- some amount of money and you kind of have to do the hard work and go through your expenses. I know, pain in the neck factor, but do it. Find the money and let's say it's 100 bucks a month. They, you can say... Suck that hundred dollars a month out of my checking account on the second day of every month. I get paid on the first, take it out on the second, get it out of your hands and go for it. And I I agree, just make it automatic and move on. That's what actually one of the greatest things about a four oh one K is that it just takes the money out of your hands. Yeah. Jill, I think if you if you make it automatic, whether you do it through a four oh one K or through something you set up with your bank or your mutual fund company, you don't even have to budget. Skip that step. Yeah. It's you just, just, you just away. To, you'll it, figure it out. Yeah, exactly. You'll know what you know what you win is the twenty second and you have no money in your account. That you, <laughs> oh, that was too much money. Rats. <laughs> uh, all right, let's move on because here's a question a couple of questions about retirement from Carolyn. How can you get a cash withdrawal from a four oh three B plan before you are fifty if the company where I no longer work won't let you take a withdrawal? I know there's gotta be a loophole. I gotta tell you about this one. I thought about this. I'm not sure if Carolyn is asking the right question, so I'm just going to kind of interpolate a little bit. First of all, if you take the money out before you're 59 and a half, we know you're going to get whacked. You're going to pay taxes and you're going to pay a penalty, so we don't want you to do that. I'm wondering if she's asking whether she, instead of withdrawing, whether she could roll it over. And what a lot of people don't realize is that there are 403B is like a 401K, except it's offered usually through a municipality potentially a, a you know education educators get it got some gov- small government employees but there you know a lot of nonprofits use 403b's and for a while there was a rule that 403b could not get rolled directly into a 401k that there were rules about how to take it out but you can take a 403b and roll it into an IRA rollover account and you should be able to do that if they are saying we will not let you take a withdrawal because you are no longer because you are not in service The way around that is to basically say, roll it into an IRA rollover and take the money out. But we don't think you should do that. I mean, unless you're really, I mean, do you ever think that it's a good idea to take money out of a retirement account before 59 and a half? I mean, I guess if you're desperate, yes, do that, right? Right, but only if you're desperate. But besides that, I think that's maybe what she's asking. And there is the, again, we don't think it's a good idea, but you can avoid taxes if it's for school or for a first home. That's right. Right. And, and the first hardship. home is defined very liberally. But I think hardship withdrawals, you have to be in service for, for right. 403B. And I think that's that may right. be the thing that's, that's stymieing her. So, Carolyn, tune in and write us more about what's going on in your situation. Right. 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 All right. You ready? Uh, Kathy wants to know, do you think the government will approve another housing tax credit for this year? Anyone getting a first-time homebuyer credit happening or not happening? Jack? I don't think so, because even if it was proposed, I don't think it would possibly get through Congress. And and again, sticking to my um, Debbie Downer approach to all this, I think it's a bad idea. Um, Maybe the first one was okay, But at this point, yeah, and I'm not even excited about that, but it was a better idea then than it is now. Let's let the the only way this is going to be solved is if housing prices can revert to their actual value and then people will start to buy them. What do you think? I uh, totally agree. I think we've been through the high of all those uh, sales that were brought forward by the credit and all those sales that wouldn't have happened when they happened originally. And then we've also been through the downside. It's sort of like a drug. <laughs> you know, it was it was great on the way up. It's been terrible on the way down. Who wants to go through the way down again? Yeah, no kidding. I say let the, let the forces of supply and demand meet. It stinks. I get it. And by the way, I think that that house credit, they would they just threw their money away. I think you could just burn it up and I'm really upset that the mo- mortgage modification process, which could have been a real plan that did something, has been an abject failure. And if they really wanted to put time and energy and resources into something, that's what they should have done. But they blew it. It's done. Uh, housing going up or down from here? Down, up? What do you say, 
Well, I think in the short term, because of that pull forward, it has to go down just a little bit because we're still paying for the fact that all the people whose purchases would have stretched out over a year or so happened in the first three months of the year. Um, but then I think it really does bounce along the bottom and go up a little bit unless interest rates spike. Uh, I think it's flat. And the reason I think it's flat is that the things that have been driving prices down, foreclosures in particular, have dumped a lot of inventory on the market and made people fa feel bad about owning homes. They're, the forces that drove them, mainly unemployment, have stopped. I mean, the layoffs aren't happening. They, they haven't gotten any better, but I think that means we'll be flat for a while. But eventually, here's how the recovery will happen, is that rents will rise with inflation, and at some point it will get to be so much cheaper to buy a house, you know, with all the psychological benefits that come with it, than it is to rent that will make no sense at all not to buy a house. Right. Who knows when we'll get there. All right, I, I have this very simple mathematical approach to this. From 2000 to 2006, house prices doubled in this country, which is startling, right? So now I'm sort of thinking, okay, wait, 2007, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So seven years in, seven years out. I say we start going up in 2014. That's biblical. Isn't it beautiful? <laughs> it's a beautiful thing. Uh, so that's how much time I have to set aside enough money to get a fancy schmancy summer house? Absolutely. Okay. Right. Although, you know, listen, prices in some areas are starting, have steadied and gone up a little bit. And sure. there was a, recently an article in, I think it was the Wall Street Journal, about how um, prices in the New York metropolitan areas started going up again. And, and but, it's, but to your point, Eric, that's because the employment situation in New York recovered quicker than the rest of the country. So again, it really is, it is location, location, location. If you need a house and you want a house, this is a really good time to buy a house. Mortgage rates are at 50-year lows. But uh, I'm, I'm hopeful that we'll never go through that period, or at least for a long time, where people really think, I'm going to use my house to save. It, we just That's not good for anyone, actually. So I'm not into that. All right. Uh, Stephen, a question about his IRA. I'm 50. My wife is 60. I have an IRA in my name from a prior employer years back. We want to withdraw money without the 10% penalty to invest in some property. <laughs> that seems like oddly 2004, if you ask me. Can I put the IRA in my wife's name and withdraw the money without penalty? Or because she is my spouse, can we automatically withdraw the funds? Do you guys know the answer to that? An IRA is yours. Yeah, baby. You can't swap even you with can't, your spouse. Exactly. It's like one. It's one social security number. That's it. <laughs> and you don't get to do that. But can't he set up his IRA as a sort of special purpose vehicle and purchase real estate within it? Uh, you know, he probably could. The question is, I'm not even sure whether if invest in some property means investment property or whether it's like I'm buying my second home or what have you. It is complicated to do that. Yeah. It's a little bit yeah. of a pain in the neck. And you, they're not every they're, you have to have a special um, company that will hold that kind of IRA account. But the funny thing is that I was just sort of thinking how people really don't understand that this is yours. That's why you actually have a beneficiary called your spouse. And that's also why if you want to change anything and you are married, you have to get your spouse to sign off on it. You, in other words, you can't give it to your girlfriend, guys. <laughs> your wife will know. Um, so it's something to keep in mind. And um, there are some things that you can do uh, with, with some retirement accounts where at age 55 you can do a lifetime averaging and things like that. But, you know, dude, you should. I, I don't know what to tell you. You have to find somebody a little bit older and richer, I guess, next time. Uh, this next one is from Beth. She has a question about Social Security, and I taught myself something about Social Security, thankfully, from Beth. Beth says, our accountant told us that my husband can opt out of Social Security after he's paid into it for 40 quarters. He's starting a new job, and the HR department says he can't opt out, even though he is receiving a pension from a previous job that he worked for 25 years. So he clearly has more than met his 40 quarters. Can he opt out or not? I had no idea about this, so I had to actually look it up. Anyone know? I don't think you can opt out of Social Security, or everyone would. Exactly, <laughs> and that's what I thought. The first thing when Megan sent me that question, I'm like, no way! Opting out of Social Security from the IRS website, irs.gov. No, sorry, ssa.gov. Can I opt out of Social Security? No. 
Social security <laughs> coverage is mandatory. But consider this, uh, and then it gives you the whole sales pitch. Anyway, um, the law does not permit a refund of social security taxes. However, here's your loophole. Ready for this? If Stephen is a minister, there's a little loophole. Maybe you didn't know this. I had to find out. This is, hold on a second, uh, IRS Form 4361. Because uh, ministers are treated differently than other workers. I guess the same maybe for rabbis in honor of the new year, I would say that. Um, anyway, for purposes of Social Security, they are always self-employed with respect to their, minis- uh, to their services. They pay self-employment tax, not Social Security and Medicare. Uh, under limited circumstances, ministers can exempt themselves from self-employment taxes with respect to services they perform in the exercise of ministry by, form- by filing a form 4361 with the IRS, and that basically gets them out of Social Security. So Stephen could found a church. Well, exactly. I'm think, I was Security. just wondering if maybe Stephen's a minister because he's got a pension. Don't some ministers get a pension? I don't know. Eric? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> some do. Uh, I have a question. That's what I learned. Can the Grand Zero Mosque guy do a 4361? He might be able to if he has a ministry. Yeah. Not, I don't think you do it like, like that's supposed to be like a JCC. To me, that's like a workout room. So I, I don't know if there's like a minister there, you know? <laughs> I don't, I don't uh, there's know. so many conspiracy theories on this. I just <laughs> wanted to throw one more out All there. All right. I like that. Um, so anyway, <laughs> Does he call it. himself Steven sometimes? <laughs> yes. Only when he's writing to Money Watch. Uh-huh. So if you've got a question, shoot us an email. Uh, ask the experts at moneywatch.com. So, guys, I'm, I'm off for the Jewish holidays. It's uh, a big year for me, 5771. Gosh, I'm going to have a hard time memorizing that for my checks. Okay, just kidding. That's an old <laughs> Borscht Belt joke. Um, in my absence, uh, let me just give you a quick New Year's resolution. Ready? Because this is, I can do this. It's New Year's Eve for me right now. So, uh, my resolution is that we here at Money Watch will continue to do exactly what we have been doing, which is giving you information you can use. But my personal financial resolution is uh, I promised Megan that I'd start eating more salad. That's it. Uh, that's that's my big resolution. I think I can keep it. So, um, I'm okay with it. I think 5771 should be a good year for you. You do? It's not really a meaningful like number-wise. It doesn't have any... You know, schwang to it. Fifty-seven, seventy-one. I don't know. It doesn't work for me, really. But anyway, uh, so I want to thank you guys for uh, taking the time to do this show with me a day early and in, in honor <laughs> of my holiday. Uh, parting shots before we go, Jack. Predictions before next week. What do you uh, need to know? What do we need to know? Well, you did very well with your Glenn Fittich New Year's resolution from a couple years ago. Yes. So I think the salad thing's going to work well. I think so. Yeah. Um, I feel good. And I think that sometime between now and the end of October, we're going to see some spooky market days. Really? Because people are going to be so scared that something bad's going to happen. They're gonna. It, it's gonna be a self fulfilling prophecy. Wow, Eric, what do you wow. want? That's a. That I, I don't need any. Well, more now wait a minute. Let's examine this prediction. Okay. Sometime between now and the end of the year, the stock market will go down. Well, or or up. <laughs> yes. Or, 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 up. Up. Yes, right. or it could stay the same. Or yes. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it, could, it could be spooky. Yes, we will be scared by the stock market at, at some least point. once. Yes, at least once. I and really went out on a limb there, didn't I? <laughs> we'll, you are. You know, you're amazing. We'll I love be, that. About we'll you. be positively surprised. Uh really? I look. I am. I'm. An optimist. Now. You are? I am an optimist. Now, for the now? first time in a long time. I am. You have been pessimistic. Wait a second. This is a moment. Let's take a moment here. You have been a little bit of Debbie Downer since from the been. moment I met you, which was, I guess, in the beginning of 2009. You were a little, like, worried, little kind of gray clouds floating above us. And right. now you're feeling good? Boy, that sounds terrible, Jill, doesn't yeah. it? it sounds no, like, and I'm feeling good. Gray clouds good. over my head at the bottom of the market before a 70%... Well, you didn't say, but wait a minute, hold on. In all fairness, you didn't say get out. You said, I think it's going to be a tough time, which it has been, you know? Yeah, so yeah. like, well, yeah, we had, we're up 55% from the bottom. That's fine. But you know, there's, uh, hello, we still lost 7.6 million jobs since the beginning of the recession. So, but you're feeling optimistic well, about the market. Look at it this way. We've lost 7.6 million jobs. Are we going to lose 7.6 million more? Nah. I don't think so. The market is down 30% from its top. Are we going to lose another 30%? You don't why? Say that. Yeah, why? What about the doom and gloom, the people who really say, this thing is going to hell in a handbasket? You know, and you read a lot of the blogs, and they'll say, hey, you know what? 
what? There's nothing good that's happening, and you know we're going to have a shredded dollar because of everything that's the policies and the housing market. You know, there's four million foreclosures that are going to happen, and you know, the world's falling apart. Goodness gracious! You say no. I say the time to worry about the world falling apart is when everyone is convinced that I love you can buy man. a house and you're guaranteed to be rich. You that's can buy it. a tech stock and you'll be guaranteed to be, uh, you know, a millionaire by the time you can say Bill Gates. The time to worry about it is not when everyone is talking like that. Right. I, I I just said recently to somebody, I've never seen a market crash when everybody is predicting a crash. I just haven't. Right. Although, you know, I guess it could happen. These are freaky times. And to Jack's point, the market may go down and it may go up by a lot at some point between now and the end of the year. I think I'm going to hold Jack to that. <laughs> yeah, I know. We're going to hold your feet to the fire on that. I also said on Money Watch to, in Alan Roth's uh, response to Alan Roth's column that 10 years from now, the S&P, or I guess the total market will be substantially higher. How about that, huh? You know, you are, right. you're going out on a limb I know, today. My crystal ball. Uh-huh, mm -hmm. uh-huh. Uh, well, okay, I'm going to predict this. I think Madonna's career is actually over in 10 years. That's, <laughs> that's really where I'm going with that. How about Lady Gaga? Yeah. I will not say one bad word about her because if Chris ever heard me say anything bad, he'd beat me up. <laughs> so I think she's fabulous and go for it. And the Stones have proven that actually Madonna might have a lot more than 10 years left in her. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not buying it. Okay. Uh, gentlemen, it's really it's such a beautiful thing to be reunited like this it with is. you. It uh -oh. truly is. It just is. feels right. It just feels right. Reunited I and it feels so good. <laughs> hey, thanks for watching Ask the Experts. We'll see you next week. Shoot us your questions. Ask the experts at moneywatch.com. And we will see you in a week. And Lashana Tova to those who it applies to. If you have a problem, if no one else can help, 